Novena to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Day 6 What swords pierce our hearts today? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christian tradition has also contemplated Mary as the Virgin of Sorrows. The prophecy of Simeon alludes to a heart pierced by the sword of suffering. Today, we want to pray from our wounds, because we are convinced that where our wounds are, a way of salvation also opens up. But we do not think only of ourselves, but we open ourselves to the pains of the Church and the world. We remain, like Mary, close to the cross of all those who suffer. Let us pray. Merciful God, when we are pierced by the sword of sorrow, help us to remain united to the cross of your Son Jesus, like Mary, so that we may share in his sufferings and experience in you too the power of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We listen to the Word of God, a reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. This Friday of the Passion, Passion Friday, the Church recalls the sorrows of Mary, the sorrowful mother. For centuries, this veneration exists among the people of God. There are writings, hymns, in honor of the sorrowful mother. She stood at the foot of the cross no, staying, they look at her at the foot of the cross, contemplating her there, suffering. Christian piety has gathered the sorrows, gathered together the sorrows of Our Lady and, and finds seven of them. Uh, the first, just 40 days after Jesus' birth, the prophecy of Simeon, who speaks of a sword that will pierce her heart. The second sorrow thinks about the flight into Egypt to save the life of her son. The third sorrow those three days, anguished days, when the boy Jesus remained in the temple. The fourth sorrow, when Our Lady meets Jesus on the way to Calvary. The fifth sorrow of Our Lady, the death of Jesus, seeing her son there, crucified, naked, who dies. The sixth sorrow, when Jesus is taken down from the cross, dead, and she takes him in her arms, as she would have taken as she would have taken him in 
her arms 30 years before in Bethlehem. And the seventh is when they put him in the tomb. And as we follow this path of Our Lady who accompanies Jesus, it does well for me when I pray the Angelus in the evening to pray these seven sorrows, to, to remember her as the mother of the church, and as mother of the church with what pain she gave birth to all of us. We talk to Mary. The Christian faith never hides the pain nor tiptoes over it. We follow a crucified one and seek consolation in a mother who, among her many titles, has one that makes her very close to us in this time of trial and suffering, Our Lady of Sorrows. Mary teaches us that pain and death, however destructive they may be, are not the last word. Mary's pain is intense, deep, but never desperate. Her words are different. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. This song does not come from a frivolous, superficial and unconscious heart, but from a mother who has witnessed the suffering and cruel death of her son, and yet has not lost faith in God. Therefore, they are true and convey an absolute confidence in the unconditional love of our Father. After listening to the Word of God, let's take a moment to reflect around this question. What swords pierce our hearts today? We can think about something of what is making us suffer in our personal life or in the Clertien mission. Let us conclude praying together. Sorrowful Mother O sorrowful mother, virgin of profound gaze, you reach the human heart for having first exposed yours before the gaze of the Father. Mother who knows pain, because you lived it at the foot of the cross, accompanying your son Jesus with maternal love. Today we need you. Today we want to tell you that we love you that we do not forget you in the midst of suffering. We turn to you so that you may take us by the hand to the merciful heart of Jesus. Mother of love, enkindle in our hearts the flame of service as you kindled in it your Son. Protect us all and bless especially the most vulnerable and needy of our congregation. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.